Hey, what's up guys? It's Medico Sil here with another video and this week it's a very interesting video. I have been flat out talking to lots of JMOs. JMO stands for Junior Medical Officers, so it's essentially junior doctors. And I've asked them, what do you wish you had known before starting as a junior doctor? There's some really interesting insights, really useful tips. So if you're a medical student in those later years, then this video should be super useful for you. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Boom. My name's Maddie, I'm a junior doctor. I work in the ED in Sydney and um, what I wish I knew, was that the question? <laughs> what I wish I knew before starting work as an intern was um, probably that you don't actually have to know everything. So don't be afraid if you feel overwhelmed at the end of medical school with exams being like, how am I gonna remember all of this? Because actually it's way easier being a junior doctor than it is being a medical student, I have found. Um, and I also wish that I spent more time socializing before I started work because you're really busy. <laughs> oh, just like having self-care things is like very important. So, you know, cause you're gonna see some pretty hectic stuff, particularly starting in the ED was really wild. Something I do for self-care is, um, I make sure before my shifts I have prepared all my meals, which sounds really lame and not like self-care, but knowing that you have like a, a home-cooked meal to eat at work makes such a difference for me before I start my shift. So like cooking is very therapeutic for me. Um, and also like taking the time to debrief. Yeah, I think just having someone, even if it's a colleague or, um, you know, someone who's vaguely medical or even just someone who wants to listen who you can debrief about, um, is really important because you will see stuff that's pretty full on and sad. So in summary, don't stress, you're gonna be fine. It's amazing, fun, and it's totally worth the slog of medical school. <laughs> Hi, my name's Simon. Um, this is about the things I wish I knew before I started working as a doctor. So, um, I think the most important thing that I took out of my first few days of being a doctor was that being calm in every situation is better than being panicked. And the reason why I say this is because of a very particular story I heard once, um, on YouTube actually, um, and it was from Adam Savage from Mythbusters. He almost died in a Mythbusters episode when they were filming a segment on escaping an underwater car. He was trapped underwater Things didn't go according to plan. And the first thing that went through his head was calm people live, panicked people die. That's helped me a bit in my time um, as a doctor. Another tip I have is that in medicine, your job is overwhelmingly comprised of working with different people. And I think working out little communicating strategies to build rapport and almost negotiate with people um, works really well. And there's little ticks that I've picked up over time, little techniques I've picked up that helps a lot. Um, one particular clip I remember watching, again, from YouTube, I learned a lot of medicine from YouTube, to be honest, um, is a clip I saw of Roger Federer once when he was disagreeing with the referee. And I think we can all agree that Roger Federer is a class act. And the way he he disagreed with the, uh, with the registrar, with a referee, was he said, um, I agree that the call was close, but based on you know something, 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 he thinks the outcome was something, something, something. And I really like the way he expressed that because he focused on the common ground between him and the ref, right? And then went on to explain the differences. Sometimes you will encounter teams where the gut feeling is that the teams aren't seeing eye to eye or you and the person you're talking to aren't seeing eye to eye. And I think it's often important to dial back and recognize the things that you do agree on and to focus where there's usually fairly small parts of disagreement are. Um, another thing would be qualifying uncertainty when talking to people. So I think it's in the nature of medicine that you will oftentimes be asked questions where you don't know the answer for, and you have certain levels of confidence for it. And I think some people reflexively try to be vague when they don't know the answer. And I think that's often quite dangerous and quite risky. And a more experienced person will pick up on that quite quickly, and it doesn't really help you. So in that situation, 
it's important to work out what you do and don't know. So for example, suppose you don't think something is the case because you would have expected to hear about it in the course of assessing the patient or from hearing people discuss it. Then I think it's appropriate in that situation to say, well, I, I don't expect that to be the case um, because it hasn't been something that's been raised yet and you would think that if that was an issue, it would have been raised. But if it's something important to your management, I can look into that more. Hi there, I'm Erica. I'm a junior doctor working in one of the emergency departments in Sydney. Been a junior doctor for the last three years. So starting internship, there's a lot to remember and you have a lot of headspace that you have to keep free. You know, test results, patient numbers, even your boss's names. You don't have time or space to waste in your head. But they're just some important numbers that you need. And it's always the numbers that you need when you're getting ready to discharge a patient or refer them for imaging. So a pro tip that I found is the back of your ID. Can you see that here? I've stuck my provider number there, my Medicare number. So then when I have to write a referral for imaging, write a script, don't have to fumble with my phone, don't have to look through my emails to find that number. It's on the back of my card. And then also things like the important key codes, I'm not gonna tell you what this one is, but also key codes for bathrooms on your ward because you don't have the headspace to waste your time remembering random strings of numbers. Have fun. Hey guys, I'm hoping that if you're enjoying this video that it earns your subscription. So please do consider subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content. Okay, back to the next doctor. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm a junior doctor working in um, cardiothoracics or cardiothoracic surgery at the moment. Um, I think something that's really good to know when you're starting out is that knowing your simple basics from like the A to E primary survey, for instance, can go a long way, um, especially when you attend clinical reviews or rapid responses. Um, it just goes a long way because when you sort of crack down the basics of everything um, and you do the simple stuff, um, everything else sort of flows into place. And don't forget to ask for senior advice and help as well. My name is Simon, I'm an intern, and uh, Sills asked me to comment on some things that I haven't, that I didn't think about or wish I knew, wish I'd known about before I started my internship. There's a whole lot that I wish I picked up, a whole lot that um, I realised I never needed to know, I suppose. I suppose I'll start with um, the medical knowledge that I need. I think. I only started to realize this towards the end of medical school and I wish I'd spent more time with it initially, is that the clinical knowledge you need is probably more based around um, management and assessment rather than a complex pathophysiological understanding of the immunology of Wegener's granulomatosis. And it's more about someone has chest pain, what are the things you do? And it's more important for me to be able to say, okay, this person has chest pain this is the history of that chest pain. These are the investigations and physical examinations that I would look at in order to do that. I needed, I think, I wish I'd spent more time looking at what is the approach to a symptom rather than what is the approach to a disease. Um, I think another issue would be the people that I work with. So there's unquestionably a, a change in the focus of being a doctor from the doctor being the hero of the story to the doctor being a part of um, a multidisciplinary team, all of whom are important parts of a working machine. I can give you an example just now. I have just been in a meeting with, um, with a parent and her daughter. Her daughter was very severely injured um, and the injuries affected her, her airway. Um, and as a result, she needs an NG tube and she needs um, a tracheostomy. Now, the conversation was fortunately had along with the speech pathologist. Now, the speech pathologist is not someone I really thought about at all. 
before um, before I started being an intern. And then I had patients who have tracheostomy tubes, or who have um, who have airway management issues, who have airway secretion issues, who have all these things that I don't know anything about, and frankly, most doctors don't. But a speech pathologist does. A speech pathologist knows all about talking, knows all about swallowing, knows all about how to stop someone from choking on their own spit. So it's really useful to get an understanding of who these people are, who the allied health practitioners are, um, and how they can best help best help give you information needed to take care of your patients. Um, and the other big important group of people that you're going to work with are nurses. And whilst there's unquestionably cultural tensions often between doctors and nurses, I think it's fair to say that um, a good nurse is the best ally that you have on the wards. That if you have a nurse who is actively taking care of a patient, they'll find your mistakes, they'll correct the things you've missed, they'll page you about their concerns and um, at the end of the day that's best for the patient and that's what we're all here for. Hi I'm Matt, um, I'm an intern working in urology at the moment. Um, when you go into your first rotation it can seem pretty daunting, however you are really well supported. Um, I think the first uh, one or two weeks comes as a shock to everyone, uh, but after that you, everyone finds himself really um, getting into the rhythm of their rotations. So I don't think there's too much to stress about. All right, guys, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you so much for watching the video till now. That actually means a lot to me. If you enjoyed it, press the thumbs up button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you know any medical students that may benefit from watching this video, then please share it with them. Okay, fam, have an absolutely lovely day. Bye for now.